Uh, my name is Alistair Dawson and I'm here to provide you with an update on the uh, current disaster operations uh, that are running across the state. I can advise that uh, in Rockhampton at the moment the current level of water is sitting at about 9.2. Um, we are advised that that could be uh, the possible peak. We are keeping a close eye on that but it is important to remember that uh, with the uh, unprecedented event that has occurred in, the, in this state since the 21st of December that these water levels uh, will be consistently uh, high for a long period of time and these levels could stay for 24 hours before they start to drop. But on saying that, there will still be significant flooding uh, in and around uh, areas across the state. Uh, it could be there for up to uh, seven days. In Rockhampton at the moment, there are 122 people that are currently um, occupying an evacuation centre there in the town. 500 homes have been evacuated. There's 100 commercial premises that have been affected by water and sadly 400 homes as well that have water across the floorboards. In uh, other parts of the state, we're looking at uh, St George, which is currently sitting at 12.32 metres and rising as of this morning's briefing. Uh, the roads to St George are isolated. However, I can advise that uh, the pre-positioning of uh, supplies including fuel, has uh, been undertaken and all that is in hand. Eight yards in the St George Township are currently uh, inundated and there are 35 voluntary evacuations but none staying in the evacuation centre. As a precautionary measure, the uh, senior citizens uh, facility has been evacuated and those, uh, those uh, occupants have been uh, returned to Brisbane uh, for their safety today. In uh, Theodore, uh, there is still water over the roads leading to the township of Theodore and there's a lot of work being done by assessment teams in the town today. In Condamine, there are concerns in regards to public health uh, issues in the Condamine uh, township and assessment teams are entering the township today and tomorrow. Again, this is all weather dependent uh, for these teams and uh, there is access, the access roads to Condamine actually uh, have water across the roads and so we are using other assets to get ourselves into Condamine. The uh, water situation at Dolby which uh, has been raised, we again uh, thank the occupants of uh, Dolby, uh, they have done a fantastic job. Uh, we have been able to keep up with demand based on current usage uh, by both using the reverse osmosis which uh, the local government has uh, engaged and also by providing uh, potable water via trucking uh, companies. What I'd like to do now is uh, pass over to uh, uh, my colleague from Emergency Management Queensland, Warren Britson, who will provide you with an update on some, uh, some of the other aspects of the emergency that we're facing. Thank you, Alistair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to raise a couple of issues with you this afternoon and ask for you to pass on to your uh, viewers and listeners. Um, it relates around Emergency Management Queensland's preparation for the upcoming resupply matters that will be raised across Queensland. So we're looking broadly across what may confront local communities when resupply. Emergency Management Queensland is the lead agency for that part and we will coordinate it on behalf of the Queensland Police Service, particularly their DDCs. So I have placed in some local government disaster management centres EMQ officers who are familiar with the resupply policy and how that needs to go about it, so we're preparing for that. The other issue is we are very much aware that today is in some way the beginning of the wet season. We're into the wet season, of course, but we have, we think, many months of a severe wet season in Queensland ahead of us. So what we are doing is we are carefully planning the use of our state emergency service volunteers, and we're making sure that those volunteers are well-rested and that they are able and capable to continue on with this uh, good work they've been doing to date, uh, we think another couple of months into this wet season. So part of that preparing ourselves for an ongoing wet season is making sure that the use of our volunteers is well managed. Part of that planning is accepting offers from interstate for volunteers to come to Queensland and where there's twofold, we can use their support but it's also a mutual aid arrangement. They come and give us a hand, allow our volunteers to be rested, and when they um, have issues, then our volunteers can go back into their states and help them as well. 
and we learn from each other. So it has many um, good aspects about actually assisting volunteers from interstate. Uh, just some details. We have a person from New Zealand arriving tomorrow. That person is a disaster management expert. Uh, that's a forerunner to 15 personnel coming from New Zealand. And we're going to ask them to go into Condamine. You would have heard from the superintendent about what's happening at Condamine. Um, and we're also putting with those 15 personnel from New Zealand five state emergency service volunteers from the uh, Bean Lee area to buddy up with them and to learn from each other, as I previously stated. Um, we're also putting 22 state emergency service volunteers from Victoria. They're going into Theodore. They'll be based out of Biloela and doing some work in Theodore. We currently have four personnel from New South Wales in Emerald, and we have five personnel from Victoria working in our State Disaster Coordination Centre. So this is all about interstate cooperation. It's all about learning from each other and it's all about assisting so that we do not run out of steam early in our wet season where there's quite a way to go just yet. Thank you. Right, so I invite any questions, if anyone has any questions. Can I just confirm those numbers from New Zealand? It was 15, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Are you expecting to take more from overseas, from other areas? No, no we, don't, we don't expect so at this time. Is there a need for more volunteers for SES organisations? Would you welcome that at this stage? Most definitely. There's never <coughs> enough state emergency service volunteers right throughout Queensland. And anyone who wants to volunteer to join, uh, it's a good opportunity to do so, perhaps not right now in the middle of this flood, but as soon as possible when we get back to business, that'll be great. How many volunteers do you have statewide? We talk about 6,000 plus, but of course they're not ever always available. There's very many reasons why volunteers are not available today. Some of them are at work, for instance. So out of the 6,000, we've probably got over 1,000 being utilised at the moment. Is, are any of breaking points? Have they gone to hospital? No. No, we're managing their workload carefully, as I said, and we're making sure that they are taken care of. And that's our job. Emergency Management Queensland's role is to support, coordinate and manage the state emergency service Part of that is ensuring we don't get to that position. How many did you say you had in Emerald from New South Wales? Um, in Emerald from New South Wales, we have four. four. Yes. And what about WA, SA, etc.? South and Australia and... has offered support, and we're working with them at the moment in a long term arrangements, perhaps later, when we see what lies ahead of us. Tasmania has done the same. I think Western Australia is, without being unkind to them, probably just a little far away. Uh, Northern Territory, right? No, we haven't heard. We haven't had any offers for them from them. Have you contacted? No, we're waiting. We accept the offers. There's an interstate protocol drawn up between all state emergency services throughout Australia, and the protocol, without being uh, sounding too much like red tape, but the protocol is offers are made. Um, so they're aware that they could help. They just have not offered. That's correct. Yes. Um, what's the ideal number of? SES from interstate? Uh, right now we have the ideal numbers. We have enough local SES volunteers uh, either working at the moment or resting and, and preparing for the, uh, the rest of the wet season and the numbers we're getting from interstate are adequate. What's the average duration of an SES volunteer then? We talk about a seven day task. So it's one day travel, five days on site, one day travel home. And Uh, there was a major task force came from Cairns down to Emerald. There's a large number of volunteers from Mackay and Proserpine in Rockhampton, as well as another set of volunteers from Cairns. There's a large number of volunteers from the Sunshine Coast gone up into the Bundaberg Burnett area. There's a, another substantial amount of volunteers from South East Queensland, Bean Lee, uh, gone to Dolby. And these people are moving around, that's our job. We're moving them in to do the job, we're moving them out to be rested. And that's what I mean by managing how we do this. What sort of time frame do you put on that? How long the operation? I mean, if rains come, recovery continues, maybe it gets worse before it gets better. Um, re recovery is going to go on for quite a while, and the State Emergency Service volunteers are fully involved in that, along with other local government and other emergency service personnel. But as I said, this is the beginning of the wet season. We don't expect this to end until sometime in March. Uh, 
tempers frame in areas like Condamine, um, or Theodore. Do you mean in the evacuees? Do you mean in the community? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we um, understand that obviously there's a degree of anxiousness for people to return to their communities and a, a great desire to return to their home. It's a natural, um, very natural feeling. Uh, we're very mindful of that. But we're also very mindful about returning people to a safe environment uh, as opposed to a dangerous environment. And uh, part of the assessment team's role is to uh, assess the ground assess the environment, make sure it's safe for them to go back in there, uh, so that when they do get back, they can actually start cleaning up um, their homes and their businesses. So in, in order to do that, we need to be able to have sewage and water and power. And so uh, we have to uh, be very mindful that uh, we're not returning people to a dangerous environment. There's a point, though, where you have to be responsible for yourself. It's your house, it's your yep. possessions. Um, we acknowledge that, absolutely. Um, but again, there is a responsibility uh, on, uh, on uh, the disaster management system to make sure that we actually conduct at least preliminary assessments, which is what we're doing, uh, across the, uh, the ground to make sure that there are no public uh, health issues for people returning. When will you be able to make a decision as to when people can move back? Well, I've been told to uh, the, the teams are out uh, today and tomorrow, so I would be looking for a brief probably um, at least by tomorrow as to uh, how we're situated. But, again, I won't know until I'm actually provided with that information. So it could be until Friday? For I don't know, and I wouldn't like to guess. Um, as I say, once we're briefed from the ground, we have uh, people on the ground. They are the people that have the, uh, the first-hand knowledge of the environment. They're there and uh, we'll wait for their brief back to us. Does the same go for the Condamine? So uh, it goes for those communities, yes, both Theodore and Condamine, and uh, they are progressing at different rates, um, and we're moving as swiftly as we possibly can uh, to get people into those environments, because remember, the roads are still cut, so we still have to get people in there. How are you getting them in there? The well, there's a number of ways they can do that. They can uh, put them in on rotary wing assets to, uh, to go there. I haven't actually quizzed the disaster uh, district coordinators about how they're doing that. My understanding would be that they are doing that and that they are actually uh, they're making inroads into those assessments. How are you getting the supplies into, say, Rockhampton, you know, food supplies? I understand the road is still OK to the north. Is there enough food in the town or is there a shortage? And across, across Queensland, that is a question that we've been asking people about resupply. And uh, actually what they're calling it is uh, restocking. Uh, insofar as that uh, the advice that we've been receiving that uh, the stocks in the supermarkets in Rockhampton are at an adequate level. The uh, retailers, uh, uh, Retail Association, uh, I believe, has uh, undertaken a, a resupply route through uh, use of barges. Um, how long that will go for, I don't know. That's a matter for the Retail Association. But the, uh, all the small towns, towns uh, are resupplied at a local level. Requests go into the local disaster management group uh, for assistance. If the local disaster management group can't meet uh, those uh, demands, they can raise it to the district level. If the district level can't uh, support those demands for whatever reason, they raise them to state and we will meet those demands. What in terms of looting, have you had any reports? I haven't had uh, any reports of any uh, flood-related uh, crime of that nature. and. Uh, we are very mindful, obviously, by putting additional police into these communities that uh, it is a responsibility for us to uh, be very vigilant in that area. And uh, I know that, uh, obviously, crime is also opportunistic as well. And, uh, again, we would say to people that any form of uh, looting is an abhorrent, uh, an abhorrent act and one that Australians, I doubt, would tolerate at all. Have any infringement notices or charges been laid against anyone trying to get back to their homes? Doing the wrong thing. Um, not that I'm aware of insofar as that. I am aware that there has been some isolated cases where people have driven around uh, uh, road close signs and uh, probably enforcement action will commence in that regard. But again, that's a local uh, issue and one that I don't have any real involvement with at my level. Are you aware of the weather outlook? I am aware of the weather outlook, yep. So what's, the, what's in the coming days? Well, the coming days is prediction for uh, rain and some storms. Um, the, uh, the, that uh, information is readily available on the Bureau of Meteorology uh, website and you can get rainfall forecasts for over the next four or five days. Uh, we're very mindful of that. We're talking with the Bureau of Meteorology daily in regards to what that actually means from a hydrology, hydrology perspective 
um, we won't know until the rain actually starts to, to fall. It could be uh, uh, no effect, however, it could be some effect, and uh, we won't know until the rain starts. But we are watching it. The current situation in Jericho? Sorry? Jericho, could you explain the situation there? Um, it's in recovery uh, stage, same with Alpha, and again the uh, transportation routes uh, into those areas have been opened up. Did anyone get evacuated? Uh, there were a number of people that occupied the evacuation centres in Jericho when the water came up. I don't actually have those figures on me, but after the event we can, after the conference here, one of my colleagues will be able to get those numbers for you. And particularly for the people in Condamine and Theatre who have been evacuated and want to get back. What, how on the ground will you tell them that they're able to get back and then how will they get back? That will be relayed from the local disaster management groups uh, and they're, they're involved with the communities now. There are community meetings occurring, that's what I'm advised, and that advice will be provided at that local level. The evacuation of, uh, of areas is uh, one for the local disaster management group along with the, the districts. And uh, our role at this level is if they need additional resources to assist in any aspects of uh, disaster management is to synergise that and uh, bring those resources to bear. What charge would be laid if someone, when he gets police orders, went back to their home? Well, that would depend on the circumstances and that would be a very hypothetical question that really without having firm facts I wouldn't be able to answer at this time. Charges would be laid, though? Not necessarily, no. I mean... Uh, there are times when we do a lot of things by negotiation. It's not the police's role uh, to necessarily go out and arrest as many people as, you know, as what people may envisage. A lot of the work that we do is actually working with the community and actually uh, talking with the community and communicating, and that is our role. Uh, and I know that that is a role that all of our uh, disaster districts embrace. Uh, as part of the role of police at the moment to stop people heading back into... No, part of our role at the moment is to ensure the safety of the community and the preservation of life, which is paramount in these circumstances. So we no one's stopping anyone moving back to the No, what we're saying is at the moment those, uh, those access roads are closed, so you can't get back in there at the moment, and we're saying until such time as we've done the assessments and we advise the community that we're saying to people that you shouldn't go back because there, are significant, there could be significant health risks. Do you know about the, um, the water, the sewerage plant situation in Condamine and Theodore? I know Dolby's they're still working through it. Uh, my understanding in relation to Condamine, I asked that question this morning, it's actually a septic. Okay. So um, it's individual, and uh, that's some of the concern is the amount of water that's gone through there. Anecdotal advice is that uh, some of those uh, caps have uh, come off. And as you can imagine, there is a need to uh, ensure uh, that uh, the public health issues are actually addressed before we uh, return people to that environment. And Theodore, are you aware of situations there? Um, they're still working on a lot of the utilities. I think the power is, uh, is one they've been working on. I think we're currently working on for fresh water, potable water. Uh, again, some of those pumps are still underwater um, and they've got to be assessed before they can be switched on. So it's about providing infrastructure so when they get, people go back, they've actually got uh, the ability to do some work in that space. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.